So what is the difference between a URI, a URL, and a URN? Well, you might have heard all three terms before. Um, URI stands for Uniform Resource Identifier. So as the name already suggests, it identifies a resource in a uniform way. Yeah, so if you think of uniform, think of military, yeah, so there's like some structure to it. And if we look at the official RFC, it says, well, a uniform resource identifier is a compact sequence of characters that identifies an abstract or physical resource. Okay, fair enough. And the important thing to understand is that a URL, so for example, this one here, a uniform resource locator, is actually a special type of URI. Yeah, so think of a URL as a subclass of URI. And it not only identifies the resource, but also provides a means of locating it. And of course, if you have a link, right, HTTPS something, and then this is the diagram, well, you have an identifier and you also know like how to find it actually. Uh, whereas with a URN, which is also a special type of URI, uh, the idea is that, well, for one, it has the URN, URI scheme. Okay, let, we we're going to talk about that in a second. And the intent here is that you have a persistent location independent resource identifier. Okay, so here the idea is to not tell you like exactly where to find it, but to just give like some ID that is location independent. I'm going to see that in a second. Okay, and in order to understand this a bit better, I just drew this little diagram here. Yeah, so there are many types of identifiers. So for example, this one might be identi an identifier. This is like a 36 character UUID, very commonly used in uh, yeah, modern applications as primary keys uh, for tables and so on in databases. Um, but this is like not a URI. Yeah, a URI has to, well, for one, identify a resource, but there also needs to be a certain structure. Like there's some rules, some syntax, that you have to follow, otherwise it's not a URI. And well, the UUID, like just a plain UUID, just doesn't follow that. However, what is a URI, for example, is something like this. ISBN and then, uh, yeah, here like some number, right? So you can clearly see, okay, this is like some number that identifies a book. Uh, it doesn't really tell you like where to find it. That's why it's not a URL. And it's also not a URN because it doesn't start with URN. Okay. So again, like here, these two types are, so to say, just subclasses of these. And in order to understand the exact difference between uh, URI and uh, URL on a syntax level, you would actually need to go and take a look at the grammar. So like how these things are created and what characters are allowed and how the overall structure looks like. I'm not going to go into detail here. However, what is important here is that if something doesn't have a colon, uh, it's for sure not a URI and also not a URI, URL or a URN, uh, logically speaking. So here is like the overall structure. It has a scheme. It has a here part query uh, parameters and like fragments and here you can you have like a complete grammar in this rc that specifies exactly how it works and this part here is especially interesting because it shows the general structure of your eyes i just took it and color coded it a bit so it's a bit easier to see so with every uri you have some sort of scheme so this could be anything it could be foo uh, it could be https yeah, so that's why URL is also URN because um, it just follows like this format. And of course, there's like some like syntactical uh, differences, um, but every URL is also like a URI, uh, but not vice versa. Yeah, so there are like some special rules for, for URLs as well. You would need to uh, look that up in the RSC as well. But in general, you have some sort of scheme. It could also be HTTPS. Um, but I'm just going to leave it at foo here. Um, then you have like something they call authority. Oops, something they call authority. So this is like the host, the port, and the user information, which is like a username, colon, password, at. Um, so this is something that you could use, but nobody's using that because it's deprecated and you have like the, the password in there somewhere. Yeah, and then uh, you also have um, a path 
well that's quite obvious right so this is like this part here um query parameters and a fragment and now you might say well hold on a second this looks um, surprisingly similar to the url syntax and that is of course true because remember every um url is also uri but there's just some more additional special rules for that yeah so the bottom line is if you have a uri is an identifier for something and with a url you also know where to find it and just uh, like a quick word maybe for the urn so with the urn we said well it has to have this urn namespace right that's what it said here at the top and this essentially means that it starts with urn colon so if something doesn't start with urn colon then it is for sure not a urn and then uh, there's something called the namespace identifier so um, this is like something that is registered in some uh, yeah, global registry where the meaning is uh, recorded yeah so you cannot simply make up like your own thing but it has to be registered in this IANA um, repository and in this repository like when you register it in in the RFC where you want to register it there's also the rules for the URN specific uh, you, for the URN namespace specific part okay so that means if you have like um, a URN so for example for this request URI then everything that comes after this colon there might be specific rules um, that this part here enforces and if your string is not sticking or adhering to those rules it is not a URN and this is even what they write in the in the RFC about it and they say well the syntactical correctness of a name starting with urn is not sufficient to make it a urn in order for the name to be a valid urn the namespace identifier so this thing here like the thing that comes after the first colon uh, needs to be registered in accordance with the rules defined here and the remaining parts of the assigned name portion of the urn need to be generated in accordance with the rules for the registered urn namespace okay the bottom line is urn um, just gives you a persistent location independent name it starts with your n colon and then the namespace here which is more or less just a logical grouping here it's uh, something related to oauth like this one needs to be registered in uh, as specified like in this uh, rc here in rc 88141 so this one over here it's called uniform resource names and then of course the part that follows has to stick to the respective rules cool so that's the difference just remember your eye is an identifier that identifies a resource if you also know where to find this resource then it's a url and well if you just want a location independent persistent name then it's a url cool so that's it for this video thank you so much for watching leave a like and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you next one bye bye